So we are looking at this Skittles lawsuit where someone is claiming that the use of titanium dioxide is potentially harmful for human, human consumption in many levels. One of them is that can modify your genetics. Uh, so, but before we get into all that, um, and we're trying, we'll, we'll try not to be too specific on the lawsuit, but we're, we're trying to understand what titanium dioxide actually is. So let's just start with that. What is titanium dioxide and, and um, why is it commonly used in many things such as food items and candy? Sure. So titanium dioxide is a chemical that is used to make things white. So it may, it's used as a brightening agent, as a, as a white pigment, and it doesn't discolor very easily, and it doesn't break down easily in water. So those characteristics make it really desirable for use as a whitening agent. So it's found in things that need to be white. So if you think about Skittles, for example, if you um, have Skittles that break apart, they all have a colorful colorful coating on top, but then they have a white coating underneath that most likely helps that colorful coating attach to the actual product. Um, and that is most likely including the titanium dioxide in that white coating. If you think of things like icing, like cake icing or whitening toothpaste or even whipped cream, coffee creamer, these are all things that have titanium dioxide in them. They're all things that are white in color. Chewing gum is another good example. Chewing gum usually has um, a coating on it. It's frequently white. That also contains titanium dioxide. So it's in a lot of things that we eat every day. Um, so what amount of titanium dioxide can become toxic for human consumption? Because also like we would like you to explain to us like it, th that the use, that the fact that it's used in so many food items doesn't mean that there's a lot of it in a piece of gum, like for example. Sure. So titanium dioxide can be included in foods. The FDA allows it up to a certain percent. I believe it's less than 1% of the total weight of the food. So it's not present in large amounts. Um, and a lot of these products we don't really eat on a regular basis. I mean, if you are eating Skittles every day of your life, then you have a lot of other issues to consider, including the amount of sugar that you're getting from the Skittles. Um, so this is something that, yes, we are exposed to it, but we're not exposed to it in high amounts. In terms of what the toxic dose is in humans, it's interesting, we don't really know. Most of the studies of titanium dioxide and its toxicity have been in animals like mice or rats. There are very few studies in humans. What we do know in humans is that it is not really absorbed by the body. So there've been a couple studies that have looked at how the body breaks down and, and um, acts on titanium dioxide that we eat. And it seems like it just passes through our gastrointestinal system. So it's not, it does not get into the blood does not get absorbed into the body, but it passes through our stomach and our intestines, and then we poop it out. So some people have wondered because of that, whether titanium dioxide can cause inflammation or diseases of the gastrointestinal system, because that seems to be where most of it is exposed to in the human body. Well, what other, because I know that we consume a lot of chemicals on a, on a daily basis. Um, what, what other chemicals do we consume frequently that could be potentially toxic in higher amounts? So to be completely honest, anything in the world can be poisonous in the right dose. The air that we breathe can be poisonous in the right dose. If you breathe too much oxygen, that can be poisonous. If you drink too much water, that can be poisonous. So everything has a toxic dose and that includes things that we put into our body every day, whether it's natural flavors or, or synthetic chemicals, anything like that can be poisonous. A lot of these chemicals though, we don't know exactly what the toxic dose is in humans. A lot of these chemicals have been studied largely in animal studies and animals like mice and rats are very different than humans. So just because something is toxic in a mice or a rat that was fed high levels of a, of a compound for you know, days to weeks, um, that does not mean that the same compound is going to be poisonous to humans. Humans are very different. We have different metabolic pathways than mice and rats in some cases. So it can be very, very difficult to extrapolate from a mice to a human the um, exact toxic effect of a product. So this is my last question before handing it, hand it over to Kelly, the other Kelly. Um, so what you're trying to say is like, it, it, we, it, there needs to be more testing and more studying to be able to determine this like, toxic amount for the human consumption? 
Right, so right now, almost all of the data out there on titanium dioxide is based on animals. We have very few human studies, and the human studies that we have are actually very, very small. So they only involve like a handful, you know, maybe 10 patients at a time. We don't have a lot of human data, so it's really hard to differentiate the exact toxicity of titanium dioxide in humans. Obviously, like with most things, if you eat too much of anything, it can be bad for you. And that's probably the same for Skittles as well. And we know, again, with the sugar content, I mean, a handful of Skittles has almost half of your daily sugar content that you need. Um, so we know that these are things that people should not be eating every day. But in terms of the actual toxic dose, we do need more data out there. Thank you. Over to you, Kelly. Dr. Johnson, Arbor, this was so helpful. Thank you so much. Um, actually, you addressed every single answer answer to any question that I had. Um, is there anything that we didn't ask you that you think that our audience should know about titanium dioxide or any kind of misconceptions about it? Let's see. So I guess there are probably a few things. Um, I think that we, I would just reiterate that we need to be very careful about um, making conclusions about human toxicity from, from animal data, number one. Um, number two, just because something has a scientific sounding or complicated name like titanium dioxide does not necessarily mean that it's going to be dangerous for us and the, the um, ways in which we are exposed to things. Um, for Skittles, I could just, if I could just say over and over again, eat in moderation, right? As long as you eat in moderation, you're probably going to be just fine. We don't want people to eat Skittles every day of their lives, obviously. Um, you're going to be exposed to many chemicals, not just titanium dioxide, but all of the other chemicals that are used to make Skittles those beautiful colors that we all love. I have one more question. Sure. Um, so why is it, I mean, we, we found this morning that in Europe, titanium dioxide for the for the European Food Safety Authority, it is definitely prohibited. They're not using it anymore. Why is this so different from European parameters and let's say the FDA? Right. So the, uh, the European ban is based on these studies in animals that have shown these potentially um, unwanted effects in animals. But however, we don't have the same effects in humans. And so I'm not part of the FDA, so I can't speak for them. But that may be one of the reasons that they considered not banning this product is because we really just don't have good evidence that it's, it's toxic in humans. If people have questions about unwanted or adverse events from foods or anything else potentially poisonous, call Poison Control for expert advice. There's two ways to contact Poison control, you can go online to www.poison.org, or you can call 800-222-1222. And both of these options are free and confidential and available 24 hours a day. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was nice to meet you. Bye. Nice to meet you too. Call anytime. I'm here to help. Awesome. Thank <laughs> you. Bye.